Good morning. It's rainy and dreary outside, but we're going to talk about the book of Acts. And so um, hopefully some sunshine will shine through. Although this isn't a very happy part of the book of Acts. Uh, what we know, uh, we're in chapter 22, 21, anyway. And um, Paul has been warned. Paul has been in mission everywhere. He's gone to lots of different towns. He's wants to go back to Jerusalem and kind of check in with home base. And uh, there's even been a prophetic vision for him that says, don't go to Jerusalem, people are upset with you. And when he gets there, the leaders of the church are happy to see him. But in fact, they also say that um, there are people who are angry with him because he is trying to open the church, the faith community of believing in Jesus Christ to people who others think are not worthy to hear that good news. And so um, he tries to show them that he's a good Jewish man as well as a good Christian man. And so he agrees to join in other Jewish folks who are doing a purification ritual. And uh, that's kind of where we pick up. So we'll see how it goes for Paul trying to keep harmony within the Jewish Christian community. I'm at verse uh, 27, and uh, just let me check my chapter. Gosh, Mary, you sh I've looked at this. I am in 21. There, it's official. So it says that uh, when s the seven days of their pur purification were nearly up, some Jews from around Ephesus spotted Paul in the temple. At once, they turned the place upside down. They grabbed him and started yelling at the top of their lungs, help, you Israelites, help. This man is going all over the world telling lies about us and our religion and this place. He's even brought Greeks in here to defile this holy place. But what had happened was that Paul, they had seen Paul with Tropius, a Phoenician Greek, walking together in the city and just had assumed that he'd also taken him to the temple and shown him around. Soon, the whole city was in an uproar, people running everywhere to the temple to get in on the action. They grabbed Paul, they dragged him outside, they locked him in the temple gates so he couldn't get back in and gain sanctuary. As they were trying to kill him, word came to the captain of the guard who's of course Roman. A riot, the whole city is boiling over. He acted swiftly. His soldiers and centurions ran to the scene at once. As soon as the mob saw the captain and his soldiers, they quit beating Paul. The captain came up, to, up and put Paul under arrest. His first ordered him handcuffed and then asked who he was and what he had done. All he got from the crowd were shouts and yelling this and another that. It was impossible to tell one word from another in the mob hysteria. So the captain ordered Paul taken to the military barracks. But when they got to the temple steps, the mob became so violent that the soldiers had to carry Paul. As they carried him away, the crowd following shouting, kill him, kill him. When they got to the barracks and were about to go in, Paul said to the captain, can I say something to you? He answered, oh, I didn't know you spoke Greek. I thought you were one of the Egyptians who not long ago had started a riot here and they hid out in the desert with his 400 thugs. No, said Paul, I'm a Jew born in Tarsus and I am a citizen still of that influential city. I have a simple request. Let me speak to the crowd. So we'll get his speech next week because it's long and uh, there's only so much I can read. But this is, again, you know, Paul is an amazing man. He's an intelligent man. He was born in Tarsus, which is part of the Roman Empire and had been a Roman citizen because of it. But he's also Jewish, very Jewish. And as we know um, from the ninth chapter of Acts, 
that he was zealous for Judaism, for keeping these upstart blasphemers about the Son of God out of the true faith. And I guess, you know, this is pretty clear cut. And it's happened um, thousands of times in our faith history that there are those who want to keep the religion pure. And at this time, it was those who were Jewish and had all of the laws of Judaism and had not agreed that, um, that even this reform movement, this understanding that the Messiah had come, that Jesus was the Son of God, was an opportunity to open the doors. So let me see if I can make that clear. <laughs> Jesus was Jewish. And if you read uh, the gospel writings, Jesus was very Jewish. And he spoke to Jewish men who were, in fact, very disenfranchised in the occupied territory of Rome. But he was Jewish. And there's different encounters in um, the gospel messages about encountering either uh, non-Jewish persons or basically kind of half Jewish persons, but we won't go into all that. But every single time he's, he's not clear that uh, it's okay to be sharing this story of God with folks who are not Jewish, part of the house of Israel, part of the chosen people of God. And so there's no time in which Jesus says, yeah, let's all open this up. Now there are points in which he is open to an individual who is seeking grace, but um, it's it doesn't ever seem like an open invitation. However, when Paul comes on the scene and is converted on the road to Damascus, um, the message that he gets very clearly from God is that God is opening this family of God, this chosen people, to all people of the world. In addition, Peter also sees a vision that says that the church has been opened up. So, although our faith history in the New Testament has a very clear indication that God wants all people, all people, to see the wonder and the grace and the forgiving power of Jesus Christ in their lives, in this generation and in this time, those who are part of the Jewish household, of the Jewish faith, and even if they have begun to believe that Jesus Christ was the chosen Messiah, they are still very much Jewish, and they do not believe that God has opened that door. For them, it's very simple. You are born into the chosen people. You don't just get in there willy-nilly. And to believe that anybody is welcome for them somehow weakens their position, I think, as chosen people of God. Although that's reading some into it. Mostly what it says <laughs> is that these Christians who are Jewish are so angry with Paul saying everyone is welcome and preaching to Greeks and talking with Greeks or Romans or whomever, um, they are so angry with him that they want to kill him. Again, you know, the, the system of silencing somebody who didn't say what you wanted him to say was to kill them, which again, isn't untrue in our world um, today. And the fact of the matter is, is that Paul is in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is an occupied city. Jerusalem is part of the protectorate of Rome. And so anytime there is a kerfuffle, a riot, somebody getting in trouble, um, as Jesus did, the Roman authorities step in. So here are folks at the temple causing a riot and causing a scene, and the work of the Roman centurions, uh, the soldiers, is to keep the peace. So 
They're not really too concerned about what's happening in this faith community and what's causing them to riot and uh, what is causing all the hubbub. All they want is quiet. They just want peaceful people. And so they take out the problem that is the, uh, that is the cause of the rioting and they literally, I'm sure, save Paul's life because it sounds from this passage that he probably wouldn't, would have been beaten to death by um, these folks who were just, again, people of faith. And people of faith can be very um, out of control. They, they feel like they're not only acting on their behalf, but they're having, acting on God's behalf, and so they can get very emotional. And so these are people who became followers of Jesus Christ out of their Jewish faith. And they believe that Paul is ruining it. And uh, so they, yeah, they're ready to kill him. <laughs> and so uh, the uh, guard and the centurion come to get him uh, out of the middle of it so they can calm the crowd. And uh, Paul starts speaking to them in Greek. <laughs> and the guy goes, what the what? You can speak Greek. <laughs> I thought you were about all these other folk who were just kind of local and speaking that other language. Um, and Paul makes the point of saying, no, actually, I'm a citizen of Tarsus, which makes me a Roman citizen, which means you've got to be uh, not caring of me, but just follow justice for me that you might not have to follow for folks who are uh, just Jewish. So <laughs> the guy goes, oh, I thought you were the guy who was in here like last month and was being problematic and fled into the desert. So one of the interesting parts just about that sentence, you know, that I thought you were the Egyptian who not so long ago started a riot here and he, then he hit out in the desert with 400, 4,000 of his thugs, that um, Jerusalem, even at this point in our history, is this magnet for passionate, uh, sometimes destructive people. And there seems to have been, you know, just a different group of people who were causing trouble in Jerusalem over and over and over again. And, um, and so now Paul is the latest too. They wanna quiet things down, keep the peace. That's what they are. The Roman soldiers in Jerusalem just want to keep the peace. This was true when Jesus was around. It was true when Jesus was killed. Um, and so they, um, they put him under arrest and take him out of the middle of the mob. And <laughs> then Paul goes, yeah, could I speak with them? And so that's what happens in uh, chapter 22, in the beginning of chapter 22. So, um, uh, the last verse of um, the 21st chapter says, uh, standing on the barracks steps, Paul turned and held up his arms. A hush filled over the crowd as Paul began to speak. He spoke in Hebrew. So um, again, Paul is an amazing man, very educated, not only educated to the point where he could speak Greek, but also educated that he speaks Hebrew, but also he knows the law I mean, he was very much a someone who knew how to live out Judaism and the laws of Judah and what it was to be a faithful Jew to the point that, again, in chapter 9, we see him trying to stop this new upstart Reformation movement within Judaism that became known as Christianity. So next week, <laughs> we will see Paul trying to explain to the crowd that it's okay, that God has called him to this. I'm not sure that's going to work out for Paul because, um, again, oftentimes people do not listen. But we will continue to try to listen for God. Yeah. <laughs> try to see what God is doing. And I guess for me, it's always um, important to know that if somebody comes in peace, if somebody comes in love, if somebody comes to say, God is leading me here, um, 
that I should open my mind to listen to them. That's not as true for me if somebody comes in violence and hatred and mean speech because I don't think those things are from God. I think those basics are still there. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and might. Love one another as Christ has loved us. That seems pretty straightforward to me. So here is Paul um, after being attacked <laughs> after he tried to do the ritual purification and prove that he was a good Jewish man, uh, still getting uh, people accusing him of things that were untrue and ending up in trouble. We'll see what happens with him next. Blessings on this day. Um, I'm getting done early because I got things to do. <laughs> I'll see you on Sunday. I'll post hopefully my uh, sermon and then I'll see you next week. Blessings and peace.